Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my Crash Course Necropolis. I'm going to go over all the basics. I'm going to go over the niche case scenarios I've learned, and then I'm going to finish with a very high-end craft to show you what it's like to make basically mere tier gear. We'll see how that goes. It will be somewhat of a gamble, but I think I have decent odds. We will see. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you will be an expert at Necropolis. Now, let's start out with the basics. Whenever you look at Necropolis, there's certain things you can do, and it boils down to three basic elements with a few extra weird things here and there that you kind of add in. And number one is you increase the modifier tier rating. This is as simple as however many mods or sorry, however many tiers are within a given mod pool. For example, if you look at mana, mana has um, 12 possible tiers. Mana goes from T12 all the way to T1. You need whatever that number is minus one times 100. So if it's 12 possible tiers, you would need 11 times 100 mod tier rating to guarantee the T1 mod outcome. Or for example, if you look at a lower a lower amount of tiers, for example, Conk only has three possible tiers you can hit, you would only need two times 100 tier rating to guarantee T1 Conk effect. You'll see that right here. So hopefully that demonstrates it. If you're worried about it, if you want to check your work, you can pull up PODB, you can pull up the mod you're working or the item you're working on, type in a tier rating, and it will cancel out the various mods based on what you're looking for. That is concept number one. Concept number two is you want to make the mods you don't want rarer and the mods you do want more common. Basically, I would recommend a pretty high increase multiplier for the mods you're looking for and then essentially every other mod you don't want, you probably want at least 300% scarcer or higher, depending on how much of that given mod is possible. For example, if I'm doing a weapon and I'm trying to only get the gem modifiers, I might go around and make a lot of the other elemental resistances, elemental flat rolls. I might go and make a lot of those elemental mods less common. But now keep in mind, these are all multiplies with each, multipliers with each other. For example, if I have something that is both a gem mod and a physical mod, this is going to make that gem mod still, it's gonna divide the chance of hitting it by four or whatever, 300% scarcer. These are not additive with each other. Originally, I thought it was additive where, say I had a gem mod and a fizz mod, it would just make the, the gem mod more like 5,000 uh, 200 chance or percent increased chance, but it's actually, there are multipliers of each other. So the idea is, Essentially, if you are trying to hit a certain mod, you want to be careful about what you make scarcer because you might be making your, your mod scarcer if they have conflicting tags based on what you're making more common and less common. Now, for example, on this item, I have gone through and made basically every mod I don't care about more scarce. For example, I'm trying to hit a influence shaper item and I'm looking for either a multi-link of like conch fractured with burning damage fracture or minion de gem levels fractured with minion support or like minion life and minion damage fracture stuff like that that's kind of what i'm looking for um those would be the the elements i care about when i'm trying to make this helmet and so what i've gone through is i've made gem modifiers more common minion modifiers more common and then i've went through and i've made resistance rare i made life rare i made defense rare i made mana rare I made physical mods rare. I made attack mods rare. I am targeting all of the base mods I can. Now, there's certain mods you can't target, like rarity, like rarity, like stun and block. These are mods you cannot decrease the weighting, and unfortunately, they are high enough weighting that they still have a chance to occur. So that's the important part of getting really high multipliers for the mods you want, because ultimately, you can only make so many mods scarcer of the mods you don't want. You still have to deal with those mods that are gonna occur regardless, and the way you make them less likely to occur is to just jack up the percent of increasing the odds of hitting the mods you want because it makes those mods smaller by proportionality in terms of like this mod is way more likely to occur. It's all about weightings. For example, if there's a hundred weight of something you want and a hundred weight of something you don't want. You want to increase the hundred weight of something you want by 50 and make it 5,000 weight versus a hundred, which makes it 50 times more likely to occur. All right. So the third concept is obviously increasing the mods you want. Those are the basic things outside of that there is a little bit of few niche things here and there for example if your item requires a certain item level you can increase the item level by baseline if you're using a lot of higher level corpses the item you get is a average of the corpses you have i think it's maybe the average 
it's basically just the average plus one or plus two it goes for the most part usually if you're using high level courses it'll be an item level 84 item but you can go through the menu and if you if you type something in it'll, it'll say hey this is gonna be item level 84 if you go through your mod pool and you say i need an item level 85 well then you can go get a course that gives you plus one item level there's weird stuff like that you can add in not too big of a deal there's also things like plus explicit modifiers at baseline these mods all or these items always have four mods so if you're trying to target a very niche thing, you might decrease a mod, so it's only a three mod item, or you might increase up to two mods, so it's a six mod item, and then you split it. For example, myself, I'm trying to make triple fractured items, and the way I'm doing this is I'm making it a six mod item, I'm fracturing six times, and then I'm splitting it. This allows me to A, get twice the amount of items, and B, um, spend less money, because when you have the craft an additional option mod, you'll notice this corpse, right here is much more expensive than everything else in terms of corpses and it's much rarer so being able to get a little bit more fracture which is cheap and then just add in a split will effectively double the amount of chances i have ish sort of that's not exactly how the math works out but the point is it's giving me a couple extra chances of hitting the outcome i want so i'm going for triple fractures and the way i'm doing that is i'm going for i'm i'm putting in six fractures and then i'm splitting the item now some things i want to talk about in terms of things i've learned for divining the item it does not work with fractured mods the fracture happens before the item gets divined so keep in mind if you're going for fracturing your item don't bother with doing the divining uh, number two is if you are wanting to divine it is super powerful because it divines each mod individually i'll give you an example of this i yesterday was trying to hit a three rat lat rat amulet and you'll notice if you go through and look at all of my mods everything is basically divined perfectly the mathematical odds of hitting perfect divines on an item with like four or five things that can roll in a range is astronomical now when i made these items i had it say re-roll explicits 10 times to like 15 times but you you ask yourself what is the odds of hitting these perfect divines and it's it's in the thousands if you if you actually do the math on it so this is how we know if you divine or re-roll an explicit it's actually very powerful because it's re-rolling each explicit by itself so for example it will roll int 10 times take the highest then it will roll strength 10 times and take the highest then it will re-roll dex 10 times and take the highest versus the alternative which is like if it tried to mathematically average out and just throw 20 divines at it and then say take the average of like all the mods or whatever it would be a much weaker divining so divines are very strong but they happen after the fracture that being said they seem to work with talismans which are corrupted items but uh they might have worked with corrupting items before i'm not sure i haven't tested they there was something when there was a corrupted inch place and there was a patch about it they might have changed it how it works with corrupted items but for talismans it still worked after the patch which is what i was testing also you'll notice i do not have any three rats here i missed every single three rat attempt i had that's because increasing the attribute chance does not change the odds of hitting a three rat three rat is still a one in 20 to one in 30 i forget how many talisman types there are so note to self it doesn't affect the chance of getting a certain talisman type so screw getting a three rat that being said there's the dream that one day i'll make a three rat with percent attributes and then a high roll three rat and then like strength and all attributes or something like that you can make some pretty crazy amulets potentially because you now you can get influenced talismans which is something you really couldn't make before okay that's a little niche thing um some other niche things are you can make um most different experimental base types or ritual base types but you need a corpse for it for example this right here this weapon i have which is, has fractured maim and fractured onslaught this weapon required me to have a corpse that said get an experimental weapon out of it and there's a few different ones like that if you go and you look at the uh the trade search you can see you'll say necropolis experimental weapon right you can see experimental weapon you can see experimental shaper elder influence you can see conqueror influence you can see grasping male there's certain special base type that you don't have access to normally which you would need to build a corpse for um outside of that uh, i'm trying to think split is taking an item and splitting the items between two and it's not giving you an additional copy it just takes the items and splits it into two and now I want to talk about uh, the layouts. 
layouts of this thing. When it comes to min-maxing layouts, if you've seen the spreadsheets, everybody has their little Excel up. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't make it too uh, much to bear. Don't worry about, for example, the uh, coffins that give you an adjacent corp corpse has increased effect. This, these coffins specify it has to be a beast or it has to be a humanoid or it has to be a construct. There's way too much um, management, micromanagement that you have to do if you worry about those. I'd suggest just throwing it away. Don't worry about those ones because you're gonna waste more time trying to set this up with those and you're gonna annoy yourself than, it, than it's worth because it's such a small, uh, a higher multiplier than the row ones or the column ones that I don't think it's really worth it for the most part, I would say. Instead, what I'd recommend, and this is what I'm going to stick to probably for the rest of the league, which is going for rows and columns, wherever you have a long line of row or a long line of columns. So for myself, I see at the front here, there's a really long row. It has about, it looks like seven placements. And the idea is pretty simple. If there's like five or more things in a row, then you can support at least one row or one column. If it goes up to six or seven, maybe you can do two or if you're trying to target specifically, you have some higher value corpses that you're trying to multiply like the additional craft, then maybe you pour some more into that row and column, which I'll go over. My go-to setup is the one I'm doing all the times. I do I do two here, I do two here, I do two here for rows. Like I go, I go and I set up all my rows first, then I set up all my columns. I go two here, two here. This is pretty much me just targeting the higher uh, length spots and then what I end up doing is I go and I get columns for the taller column ones. I go two here, I go two here, I go one up. And the idea is basically wherever I see a long a long column or a long row, I'm adding in golem, column crafts or grave crafts just to multiply on that. Now, for example, right here, I have an additional mod craft, an additional mod craft, an additional mod craft. Since I have so many, I actually add in a bit more columns, even though it's not necessarily efficient, because at the end of the day, in terms of what you put your money into, the additional crafts are a lot more expensive than the uh, most other crafts in the grave. So it's worth it, even though I'm getting like only 75% effect out of this, so it's not necessarily efficient. Um, it's still worth it because I'm multiplying my highest value corpses and getting the most value for the money I put in. So I would say just break it down to if you see a long row or long column, then consider using the row or column crafts. And outside of that, don't really worry about it too much. Just keep it to the basics of get things increased or the mods you want, do decreases for the mods you don't, and then modify your tier rating based on what what item you're crafting. If you're crafting like a triple T1 defense chest, you're probably going to need 9, 8, 1,000 modifier tier rating. If you're crafting something like an influenced item, like what I'm crafting here, you can look and you'll see there's not many tiers to the various gem modifiers. So for me, I'm trying to hit a multi-fracture on influenced uh, quonk effect or AoE or spell crit, I only need about 200 rating to knock out those lower tiers. So I don't need to prioritize that as much. I'd rather prioritize some of the multipliers on increasing my chance at gem or increasing my chance at minion or increasing my chance at crit. All right. So anyways, let's go over the actual craft I am doing right here. I have a thousand percent increased crit. I have 5,000% increased gem and I have 2000 increased minion. This is me targeting all the mods I care about that are possible while I'm decreasing all the mods I don't want. Now, the reason I have these is because there are two valuable things that we could get as outcomes. We are gonna get either a Shaper or an Elder Helmet. It's a 50-50. Now, if I get a Shaper Helmet, I'm trying to hit Area of Effect, I'm trying to hit Hypothermia, I'm trying to hit Crit Chance. Now, there's mods I don't want. I don't want, for example, Cold of Spells, Lightning of Spells, I don't want, uh, I, don't, I really don't want Interfate. Uh, for example. So what I've gone through and I've done and I've, I've reduced caster, I've reduced lightning specifically outside of just reducing resistances and other things. And the idea here is I'm prioritizing pushing hypothermia. But that being said, um, when I reduce caster to try to make these mods less common, I am also reducing the chance that I hit a uh, crit chance. Socket of Spells is also a ca uh, caster modifier. So in order to compensate for that, there is no other crit mods on either of these helmets for attack crit or spell crit, which are both good mods. So when I'm reducing the attack and I'm reducing caster, which takes out mods I don't want, to compensate for that, I'm adding some increased crit chance to still increase the likelihood that I hit those crit chance socketed gem modifiers. I also have a bunch of gem mod increases because I'm targeting the Shaper and Elder specific ones. And then I also have a big multiplier on minion. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because the highest value item I believe I can hit on this craft 
is if I hit the plus two minion gem fractured on an elder helmet where I also hit something like attack crit or I hit minion damage and minion life. If I hit those sorts of things, if I hit a triple fracture, I am on the precipice of basically making a perfect multi-link helmet for a minion build. Something that is very expensive to do, but graveyard gets you pretty much 90% of the way here. So either I will hit a helmet that is very good as a multi-link caster or attack. No, probably just caster helmet. If I hit a multi-link fracture, a caster helmet, that'd probably be a shaper base. I could hit a multi-link uh, for RF if I hit burn damage and conk fracture together. I could hit a multi-link for a minion helmet. Those are the things I'm shooting for. So all in all, I have a lot of multipliers for that. And then I have six fractures, one split, a guaranteed six mods. It's 84 because that includes all the mods I believe that I need or that I can hit because I don't care about, for example, when I look through these mods, there are mods at 85. Uh, for example, uh, Fizz the Spell, uh, uh, Chaos Spell. I don't care about those mods. Or for example, for the plus two minion gems, I only need item level 75. Item level 85 for recharge rate, I don't care about. Um, and all the gem modifiers I care about are 84 or lower. So I don't care about increasing the gem level. And so yeah, we're gonna go for a hubris, um, energy shield, hubris space, right like this. I'm gonna click exercise and we're gonna see what we're gonna get from this shaper. Increase influence mods, let's see what we get. We have four additional crafts. It could 20% chance roll us a six additional craft. Let's see what we get. And then after this, I'm gonna show some other very nutty things in terms of what you can do once you hit. So, see if uh, I'm gonna make a fool of myself or I'm gonna make something very good. I was, I was confused for a second there because I didn't see the symbol of like shaper next to the fracture. I thought the shaper would occur. Uh, but it's clearly still there. I thought, uh, I thought for a second that I was like, oh, maybe, maybe they patch this because this is this is something we've never had before, which is fractured influence gear. Um, so I thought, it to me, it's like either they wanted to add this as a new thing, or maybe it was an oversight with the shaper parts. I don't know personally. Um, but anyway, so trap in mind, rarity, fire resistance. This is obviously a wash. But the good news about this is one of the bad outcomes I have on a shaper helmet is hitting the trap or mine mod that I don't really care about. So potentially if I have this here in front of me, that could mean, hopefully that's a prefix. Is that a prefix resistance or a rarity? No, it's a suffix. Uh, it's two suffixes. So this will probably won't run out, work out, but basically whatever the, whatever is the split of this could be a good helmet. So let's go ahead and look through the rest of our helmets. Right now we have, look at this, a conk, minion damage, emulate multiple links here which already has you basically at the gateway of a good helmet without really doing too much i could effectively go grab a hypothermia helmet and awaken orb this with the attack crit version of this helmet and i'd have five links right there with a benchcraft open and i could craft aoe or proj or whatever right so the potential is there let's go through the rest and see if we have any really big hits spell block minion life crit not really what we want let's see if we have minion life spell block unfortunate emulate spell block flat yes and we're all just basically fishing for the big hit minion life less duration crit chance that's like okay but not really what we want area of effect rarity attribute just a big wash we'll see if we walk away a winner on any of these <laughs> mana unfortunately snuck its way into a trap in mine hypothermia could have been a good multi-link Helmet, potentially I can still make it into one. Uh, area cold res, oh no. Oh no, this one could have been, this one could have been where it hit trap and mine. If this had hit, if this had hit the spell crit instead of the trap and mine damage, this would have essentially been a gateway into making essentially a perfect minion multi-link helmet, but we hit trap and mine over that, over the, uh, the crit chance or whatever and hypothermia increase and hybrid yes unfortunate it looks like all of these we were just close but not really we missed via one mod or two now the, the problem with this is i went for a triple fracture i wouldn't particularly recommend this i'd recommend for a double fracture because double fracture your odds are a bit better because i was increasing to six mods when i should have just maybe been targeting four increasing mods but i wanted to go for the biggest possible hit which would have been 
something like the minion gems, hypothermia, and then spell crit. Now, I am very surprised, actually. We hit a lot of shaper helmets, but I don't think we... Do we even hit spell crit once? I don't think we hit spell crit once. I'm actually very surprised about that because we did have uh, a 10x multiplier for crit. Uh, no, we did... Okay, we hit attack crit. We didn't hit spell crit, though. So, I'm a little bit surprised. But anyways, needless to say, we hit... Uh, we just missed the mark on all of them, which is a big bummer. Um, I will recover eventually, but let me give you an example of what I'm talking about in terms of crafting this, because they still have value in that they have um, multiple valuable links here. So what I'm going to showcase right now is if I have one that has... I was going to put spell crit and then minion damage. So, for example, this helmet right here, we could easily go get spell crit on this by reforging crit a few times. Oh, I want to bang some of these because I don't want to like, I don't want to have too much inventory space. Oh. I'll do this one as an example to show you how the awaken orb crafting works. Um, I'm going to cut to me having awaken orb uh, or bought a, I'm going to go buy a minion damage elder helmet to showcase what you can do in this situation to still end up with a pretty giga chad minion helmet. So I'm going to cut to that real quick of me buying a minion damage helmet. Okay. I have here a minion damage helmet. And I'm going to showcase how powerful these fractured influence items are in terms of forcing mods you want. So real quick, I'm going to do a critical reforge. The only crit mod is spell crit, and it's a one in three for me to hit a uh, three spell crit. Now, I might honestly. Uh, no, I don't want I don't know. I could I could go get a. Uh, a uh, what you call it, a. Uh, maven orb and go for a three spell crit but i don't want to do that just for the sake of the example but anyways the way this awaken orb works is you awaken orb onto the fractured base and essentially the awaken orb will tell you no until it attempts to awaken orb the correct mod so when it tries to awaken orb the fractured mod so for example if it tries to awaken orb the minion damage of the fracture mod it'll just be like no can't do that it, bra it brain doesn't compute but what it can do is once it selects spell crit with the minion damage, it will work. So it hit the first time and it worked. And you'll see we have minion damage, spell crit, hypothermia, plus two minion gems on one helmet. Now, obviously, since we hit the trap and mine damage, uh, that is just a little bit shy of essentially the perfect helmet uh, for, for like a multi-link minion bot helmet. Obviously, you could get a little bit stronger. Like if I went for elevated minion damage and elevated uh, spell crit, I could have done that before I went for the awaken orb, stuff like that. But the idea would be, essentially, uh, if you're making the perfect helmet and you had hit the fractured spell crit, is you would do the Awakener Orb to then transfer over the Elder Influence, because the Elder Influence is on this helmet now. And then you would do, like, Essence of Horror till you hit spell crit. Yada, yada, yada. The point is, this is still an insane helmet. Um, and then a lot of those helmets, um, had we not been uh, pretty unlucky uh, with our hits uh, can also be usable in a lot of ways. Like this conk minion damage immolate one, this might still be uh, very, very usable. For example, I could go awaken orb this with hypothermia and, um, could I awaken orb this with hypothermia? Oh my word, actually we could go hypothermia attack crit probably. Uh, but yeah, we can awaken our fist for more multiple links. The point is, you can make some pretty crazy helmets uh, with this new mechanic. I have to say, I'm not like 100% convinced. Did they mean to let us be able to fracture influence gear? This has been going on for a while where Eldritch gear was just so much better than Shaper and um, Elder and Conqueror influences because you could get fracture stuff with your Eldritch gear. It would be way easier to craft, whereas these you'd end up with like four good mods or three good mods or whatever. It'd be very expensive to craft. And this opens up a whole can of worms of making very strong items for not too much money. 
So it's kind of crazy to me, but you can awaken her orb to essentially force uh, links. So anyways, this is the breakdown of Necropolis. Hopefully you guys learned something. I don't know. I probably was a little bit wordy with some stuff, but the main point I wanted to get across is boil it down to the simple steps of increase the mods you want, decrease the mods you don't want, and add modifier to your rating based on what thing you're trying to hit T1 of, and then prioritize rows and columns, forget about the adjacent stuff, and just start planting stuff in your grave and hit the craft button, see where it takes you. You might find out you make some really, really good pieces of gears considering you can select the exact base you want on top of, you can fracture influence gear and make crazy multi-linked items. Um, the potential is really there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching Exiles. Take care and peace out.